Warning, warning. Warning. Prolonged listening to this show has been known to cause side effects such as excessive winning, making money, getting jacked, and love and life. Tune in at your own risk. And now, without further ado, welcome to The Spencer Clay Show. What's going on, guys? Spencer Clay here. Welcome back to the Spencer Clay Show. Today, I've got a great episode for you guys. This is going to help anyone who has a hard time making decisions as I used to do. So I've been talking to some of my friends or people in the program and stuff. And, you know, decision making is like so crucial to like, I mean, everything in life. I mean, you think about it, like your choices literally define your life, who you are, what you do. So starting at the base level of like decision making, like if you look at the word decide, it literally means to cut away like side. It's like, you know, some like Greek or Latin root but to cut away all other decision-making. And so we recently, we read a book called endurance, which is the story of Ernest Shackleton and how they went down to Antarctica. And this is something that I just got on, picked it up off Etsy, but you know, it's, if you guys are listening to the podcast, it's on the YouTube video, but as men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return, doubtful honor and recognition in case of success. And has his address. And this is supposedly like fictional. Like, I don't know if he actually had this plaque or that, that advertisement sent out, but he got 27 other men to accompany him in 1915 down to Antarctica. You know, obviously, you know, no, (laughs) it was cold as shit. They're going down. They went out in the summer. Their their plan was to be the first people to dog sled across the whole of Antarctica. Cause I believe that the, the South pole had been discovered or the first person went there in like 1912. So they just, the British had just lost to Norway. And so they had to make up for it. So they had to go, they were going to dog sled across the whole Antarctica. Cause why not? Why the fuck not? But anyways, they they're getting down there and they get caught in a shit ton of ice, like right, right at the mouth of the Weddell sea. And so they're stuck. They get stuck for like months and the, the ice ends up crushing their ships and they have to take to the ice where they're stuck on the ice for like almost an entire year. And I'm going to weave this all back into decision making, obviously, but it's just, it's just an, incre- it's a crazy story because they end up, it ends up taking them 17 months to get rescued. And they're, they're in that freezing cold. Like we're talking frostbite, no food, no water, except the only way you can get water is with ice. And it's just a crazy story because, I mean, now you think about like our life now, like how good we have it. Like we complain nowadays if we don't have Wi-Fi, if we don't have this or that. And like those guys, all they wanted was like a dry pair of socks or like a biscuit would have like made their entire week. Like, so like humans are built for like this insane amount of like, we are, we are the toughest things on the fucking planet. Like when we put our minds to it and when we have to survive, like they survived 17 months in the Antarctic winter, like twice, like that's like no sun for like months. Like imagine like literally negative, like below zero and you're living in a fucking tent. So like the, the story itself is incredible. And you know, they ended up like not even coming close to their goal, but you know, they, they, they surpassed it with like the grit and like determination of their entire group. And I, I really love the story because it shows a lot about Shackleton's like decision-making power and his leadership which comes from like, you know, so he not only did he get all these guys down there, but he also made everyone back, had everyone come back safe and sound, which is which is in and of itself really cool. So there's a lot of leadership principles that I extracted from the book. You know, as someone myself, you know, I got guys working for me, I work with other guys and I have to I have to be a leader, you know, especially like this podcast and stuff. We need to be fucking leaders like any guy listening to this. People look up to you. You got to remember that people look up to you. And that stems from your decision making. So you need to be a man who can make decisions quickly and efficiently. And so that's something that like I used to struggle with all the time. And I remember I heard a great example, like something that you can try to this day is start, start with things that don't really have that much consequence, which I mean, consequence people think of as a negative term, but it's actually, you know, it's just, it's a neutral term. You can have positive consequences or negative consequences. Just when you make a decision, you know, something's going to happen, right? Cause and effect, like pretty basic. But as Theodore Roosevelt said, you know, when, when you're faced with the decision, let's see if I can find it in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing. So some stuff like that really cuts deep because like we have so many decisions nowadays, like we are surrounded by thousands, millions of things that we can choose. Like even like walking down the aisle at the grocery store, like seeing cereal, 
not that you should be buying a cereal, but it's a good example of like there's like a thousand different brands and t- types of cereal you could be eating. And just like the amount of choices and stuff, it's like mind boggling. So really cutting through, like cutting through all that bullshit and becoming a good decision maker is going to save you a lot of mental energy and it's going to help you be just a better man. And so something that I want you guys to try is next time you're out at dinner or you're out ordering any set, sort of food, this is something where you're not going to really have any consequence. Like if, if it, if you don't like the food, like whatever, but something that like I used to do is I'd read over the whole menu. I'd spend minutes like, Oh, do I want this? Do I want this? Now it's like, I read the menu and I just use my gum. I read the menu. Okay. Oh, this sounds good. I want that. I make a split second decision and that is it. It does not get changed for anything unless there's like a, an extenuating circumstance. Like maybe they don't have it that like that day or it's not on the menu or something. But like when you make a decision, you need to stick to it. No back and forth, no wishy-washy because like, like, like Theodore Roosevelt said, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The second best thing you can do is to make the wrong decision. And then the third best thing, the third, the, the, <laughs> The worst thing you can do is nothing. So obviously we're talking about like ordering food, which is very low, low threshold like thing. We're not really, we're not really worried about this, but this is going to carry over into every aspect of your life. You know, when you're thinking about doing a job or making money or like how we're going to fix this problem, how we're going to clean this roof. We need to make quick decisions like Shackleton when he's in the Antarctica, he doesn't have the luxury of thinking about, Oh, should we do this? Or should we do that? I don't know. Should I like get hop off this ice? that's like gonna fucking kill us if we don't like he had to make quick decisions and his men followed them to a t like they did not waver and he was very good which is really cool i was i was watching i was reading kind of between the lines because the book is more about how to like is, is about their journey but i was reading more for i was i really like identified and like found a lot of like commonality with with shackleton himself like which is kind of cool like i mean he lived like 100 years ago but like you know the the, the way that people think back then like a, an interesting thing that they had said, this is something that me and some of my friends have, have commented on is like, we felt that we were a, like a, a, a massive like car engine, like a V8, but we're stuck in like a Honda Civic or something like, basically we are powerhouses as men, but we're stuck in these like low opportunity environments. So, and there's something that they mentioned back then was like, oh, Shackleton felt like he was a, like a, a Clydesdale like racehorse or pole horse uh, hits to a children's cart. So it was like, there's a little bit of analogy there, which like basically as a man, like you need to be putting yourself, you need to be hitching yourself to the biggest cart that you can haul. You need to be putting your V8 engine into a beautiful like sports car. So this is, this goes, that goes down to your environment. So that's, that's why he was like, fuck this. I need to make something of myself. I'm going to go down to Antarctica. I'm going to make something of myself. And that was his thought process. And I've, I've thought a lot of similar thoughts too. Like I need to make something of myself. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to do all this stuff and I'm not going to fucking quit. And like, and in times like that too, like the beautiful part of like being on in perilous situations too, because I've been in a few myself, like, you know, sometimes we'll go fishing out of the ocean and we, we take these ocean kayaks. This is, this is really funny. Cause it's like, I like, I, I cannot imagine. I could barely imagine. Cause like after a few hours, cause we like to go fishing me and my buddy, We'll go out and we're like, we're not too far off the coast, we're, but we're in these ocean kayaks and it is cold. Like we're talking March out, you know, at the tip of Washington, it is cold as shit. And like within a couple hours, like you can't feel any of your fingers, any of your toes. And you're like quickly, like, like you stop shivering very soon. So it's like, that's just after a few hours. And we're still like in the modern day, like we know like, okay, I can go home. Like I can get a, a warm thing of soup or whatever. And back then, you know, they didn't have any of that shit. So it's like, it's crazy to see what, like what the humans can go through, but also comes down to like the lack of decisions, which is, which is something else that I want to talk about. Cause there's another really good book that I would recommend to anyone. It's by the psychologist, Barry Schwartz. It's called the paradox of choice. And the paradox of choice is basically kind of what we've been talking about is we have so many choices nowadays that your mind gets overwhelmed. And then the more choices you have, the less satisfied with the option you ultimately choose right? Like think about any time you've had to make a decision, like, like, yeah, the, the grocery store is a good example. Let's say you go and you're, you're trying to find like a thing of beer. And let's say, let's say, for example, though, that you've never drank beer before, how would you choose which beer to drink? There's like hundreds of options. 
So this is why, you know, obviously we humans have ways of making our thought more efficient. So we just go with the one that we've always done. So we always just do the thing that we've done the most. And so that helps us with our decisions because like the more decisions you make, you can literally feel it's mental energy. I think I remember David Goggins was saying that like you can, your decision making your will, your willpower is, is infinite, but it, I, I don't believe that's true. I think it's, I think maybe that was, he said something he was trying to say you can train it and make it better, which is true. But I believe that you can only make so many good decisions, excuse me, in a day. So you'll see a lot of like really like autistic guy, like entrepreneurs or whatever. They'll have like the same t-shirt. They will only wear the same like style of clothing every single day because they don't want to make any extra decisions. I think that's a little bit excessive, but I mean, you can see where like ultra rich people do this. You know, Hormozzi said like he doesn't like to cook his food. He just has a, a personal chef prepare all his meals. So it, it extrapolates to a lot of different things because... I mean, the less decisions you have to make about stupid things, the more power you'll have to make decisions over things that matter. So things with your business, things with your life. A great example that they talk about in the book is like nowadays we have so many choices for like when it comes to dating. Like think about your grandparents. They had just like, you know, a few people in their town. Whereas now we have like all these like online dating. There's literally quite literally millions of different options of like potential women that you could be dating or men if you're a woman or whatever. And it's just like we are fucked nowadays. So the whole point of that book is he, he calls it, there's a maximizer and a satisficer. So I'm going to kind of like wrap that, that thought up, but like maximizers, they want to make the best decision all the time. And these people tend to like, they, they they tend to make the most money because they, they switch jobs all the time. They want to have the best job. And, but they're also the least happy. Whereas people who are satisficers, which is a mix of like satisfied and suffice, which is equate that to just good enough. They're, they're happy with just good enough. And in this, in this instance, the second I read this book, I read this book years ago and it's something that I think about a lot and probably need to reread it. But I've, he's like, the whole point of the book was like, you need to stop being a maximizer and transition to a satisficer as quick as you can. You're going to be a lot happier with your life. You need to make the decision, stick with it. And that's it. Like that's like, there's no going back. Like there's no point wasting thinking about all the decisions that you could have made. And so that's something like, so if you're watching this and you're having, if you're struggling making decisions in your life, start with the small things, start making lightning fast choices. Don't turn back. Don't second guess yourself because the grass is always going to be greener. Like doesn't matter what the fuck you're doing in life. Like there, you're always going to see like some other job that's going to be better or some other city is going to be better or even some other partner that you want to marry or whatever, but you need to make that fucking decision and stick to it. So like that is a good way to wrap up unless I have any other notes here. Yeah. Accepting good enough. Um, let's see. Execute decision. Yeah, that is pretty much it. So make better decisions, start with the small things and this will lead up into the big things and bleed into making you a better man, better leader who can be some that people look up to. Cause when you make good decisions, people can notice that. Like when I say something, especially my friends or my family, when I make a decision, people don't even argue. People don't even like say anything. They're like, okay, we're doing that. Like people like notice this too, especially when you're, especially when you're dating. This is a great thing with women. Like women, you learn this very quickly. They pretend to want to make decisions, but they really fucking don't. Women are very much happier if you as the man take responsibility and make decisions. That's why it always kind of drove me crazy when people are like, oh, like she always, she never says where she wants to go eat. I was like, no, dumbass, you're supposed to be the one that makes the fucking decision. Like, that's your job. So I've never had that, that problem, especially once I, <laughs> once I read this book. And so, like, now it's like, I'll be like, oh, baby, what, what, do you have anything in mind tonight? It's like, oh, no. I'm like, okay, we're doing this. We're, we're eating Indian food. And that's it. Like, she doesn't, she's not going to argue. She never argues because, like, that's what we're doing. And that, that leaves people with, it makes people feel more comfortable when you can make good decisions because they know that they feel safe around you. And so... That is pretty much all there is to be said on this topic. Let's get after it, guys. Make some fucking money. Let's go. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to the Spencer Clay Show. That's all for now. See you in the next episode. Peace.